Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Hump Day edition of Today in Sports Betting. As always, we appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate it if you'd give us the like, give us a subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we're going to talk a little NBA action here as we all just kind of tap our foot anxiously waiting for the Final Four this weekend. So, Scott, how'd the Final Four, how'd the, uh, how'd the Elite Eight Day 2 do for you? Fine. I think the same as, the, as um, you know, you and Dave. We all went two and two. Yep. All, all went two and two. We all had the under correct, and we all missed the sides. That was just absolutely, just absolutely a no-show by uh, USC or, you know, a big show by Gonzaga. Take your pick. And then in the nightcap, I still don't even know what to make of that. Juzang had 28 of their 51 points. Couldn't stop him. Um, the one play that bothered me the most in that game was the little runner that Juzang hit on the baseline with about two minutes to go. Yeah. I'm like, you know that he has more than half their points. Shouldn't you be what? trapping him with the ball? Where Dickinson like doesn't even move over to help out. Dickinson didn't move. Yeah. Riley fouled out. I'm like, you, shouldn't you try to, you know, at least force somebody else who might be – How did Dickinson not go at Riley for about three minutes? Until, I have no idea. Until finally uh, – was it, was it Wagner? Wagner if, went in – you knew when he got fouled? Yeah, they finally took yeah. it to Riley and picked up his fifth. It was Wagner that drove, that drove, the, that drove the lane. I'm like, Jesus, finally. Somebody's like – but Dickinson get the ball, he'd back into Riley and toss it out. Just, the only thing I know is that I was watching the game and I was talking to my friend. Now, of course, Michigan winning would have completed my perfect Final Four. And that didn't happen. Yeah. So, uh, kind of upset about that because my bracket. Yeah, we're, all, we're, all, we're all heartbroken for you, believe well, me. My bracket, the point is my bracket pulls now. I can't get second. I can only get third. So, uh-huh. like I, so that happens. But yeah. either way, I'm watching the game and I'm texting my friend who I'm in the bracket pool with. And I tell him, I'm just rooting for free throws. Because I don't trust anybody on Michigan to make any shot imaginable. Nope. Get me to the line right now, and we'll see what happens. And then nope. they got a bunch of good looks, and they couldn't hit a shot. Yep. Nope. Nope. Just just awful. What did Michigan go to end the game? Like 0 for 9? 0 for 10? Uh, 0 for 9 was the last I heard. It was 9, but then I thought that like might they got the, the – The last one might have been the 10th one. I'm yeah. saying I think they went 0 for 10 to close. Well done. That's some pressure basketball right there. Uh, Juwan Howard, his stock rose and plummeted faster than anyone I could possibly remember. His, his stock didn't plummet. He's I'm, I was, I was, I'm joking. I just mean like he was riding the hot wave and everyone was like, oh, you know, he's doing all this without livers. And I'm like, I know livers is important to your team. Yeah. You really couldn't come up with a better game plan than that? That's what you had? His game plan should have been stop Juzang. That's the entire game plan. That's it. That's it. Maybe throw in, like, a, a half-court, like, press or something. Like, get up in his grill. Deny the ball. Do something. That's one of the, that's one of the worst big-time performances by an individual that I've seen in a long time as far as Faulkner goes. It was couldn't, bad. Couldn't defend, couldn't shoot, had three points. Just dreadful. Just, I'm trying just, to remember who else had some really bad games in crunch time. Uh, well, truth is, if you're talking about full crunch time, I thought Herb Jones on Bama a couple days prior wasn't much better. No, that was that was a, yeah. That, that was, was pretty a, bad. Uh, if you want to talk about my alma mater, you can talk about Decker in the title game. I don't. I, that's what I figured. But he went, I believe, zero for five from three, airballed three times. Uh, which uh. You know, there's been a lot of bad performances, but that one was. You have the entire Butler team against UConn from like ten years ago when they scored like when they shot like eighteen percent from the floor. <laughs> well, you know that's that's Butler, dude. That's a little different. So. I'm just saying though, like the whole team. It's not a, it's not a one seed. Just imagine one Wagner, but that's the entire roster, and that was Butler in that title game. Let's talk about the NBA. I'm 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 over I'm over this thing. Uh, you know, like I said, we're and we're still fine. We've we've had a great season as far as against the spread and as far. It's pace better for me technically because I still have the Gonzaga futures. I think I, I I don't know. Truth is, I think Gonzaga would kill UCLA or Michigan, but Michigan at least has other, I'd say, ways to win. UCLA keeps winning. They are such a one-dimensional team that it's actually crazy they've made it this far. Yeah. You know, they kind of have their own, like, Virginia Cinderella run going where every game besides the Abilene Christian game comes down to the wire and they find a way to pull it out. Besides Juzang and occasionally uh, – I forgot what his name is. It's not Marquez. It's uh, – what, what's his name? It's not Juarez. Um, Jaquez. Jaquez, thank you. Uh, him, he occasionally shows up. Yeah. It's pretty much Juzang and nobody else. Yeah. 
and like nobody is trying to force the ball out of his hands. Yes, I know. We all watched it, Scott. It's, it's every round. You got, let it go. I, 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 I'm just saying, Gonzaga, go. getting the spread. I'm, I'm just going to ask one thing before we wrap up. Gonzaga 13 and a half when it opened. Didn't that feel a little bit low? <laughs> Didn't it feel a little bit low? I thought it was going to be like 15 and a half or 16. You just you, – I, I, I'm sure we're going to hear about it. I'd like to know what the – and I'm sure somebody's going to tell us what the biggest spread in a Final Four game is. I believe it was uh, – I, I heard about it. It was in like the 70s, I think. It's the biggest spread in the Final Four since North Carolina against Syracuse. Uh, North Carolina was laying 10, and they won by 17. There you go. So, we'll see. Well, let's talk about real basketball, Scott. How about the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavs? What a fun time. <laughs> oh, God. The, the Celtics are, are turning into the Warriors. They're on TV every night. I know. I know. It's It's just – Great, we're going to have the Celtics on TV. On TV, and of course, the question about the Celtics is this: is a question is always about the Celtics. Is Jalen Brown going to play? Oh, I think you're going to say, can they actually win a game? <laughs> close, it's close enough. Uh, I don't know. It's the real question. Nobody really knows. But if you want to actually look at some lines and numbers, of course, most books don't have it because of the reason you just said. They don't know if uh, Boston's second best player. Is going to play in the game. However, if you do look bet, around, FanDuel. I bet you found a line. What? I bet you found a line. I did. FanDuel has a Boston plus one. I don't have a total. Boston plus one. Yep. I think you'd agree with me if Brown's out. I got to take Dallas, but I can't touch it until I know if Brown's playing. That line sounds like Brown's out. That's what it sounds like to me. But I think you'd agree that. If you take Dallas, you're gambling on Brown not playing. I mean, that's just a given. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is a – I would take this, Dallas by default. This is, such a, this is such a weird Dallas team. You know, they, 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 they come out and you, see, and you see them play a couple of games. You see them like the game at Denver where they're, they're – you know, they win by 13 at Denver. They uh, crush Portland by 40. And you're like, yeah, maybe this team has a little something. And then they just fall off the cliff like against Indiana and New Orleans just – Huh. I, found, I found those two games interesting personally because Dallas is only two games over 500. You mentioned how Dallas fell off. It is worth mentioning that Doncic did not play in either of those two games. My question is, your team's 23 and 21. Can you really afford to be resting your best player? Well, I guess they're, I guess they're going to need him for the kick. and It's, it's tick-tock because it's time. I guess. I'm just saying, Dallas, you're looking at the seedings. It's one thing if – for example, the Lakers or the Clippers would keep resting Kawhi or LeBron or any of these guys. What's Dallas? Like the five or the seven? Like five to seven seed? Like there's a play-in tournament. Why are you resting your bench, your best player? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're the they're the half, se- they're the seven now and, and dropping like a rock. You're half a game up on your division. Maybe you can wait until you have a couple of games of cushion before you start resting your best player. Well, in there, you know, I guess they. I guess maybe they've. Resign themselves to the play-in game? I don't know because they can still win the division. I I forgot if the NBA still has that rule where if you win the division, you're guaranteed a top uh, like four or five spot. I don't know if that exists anymore. I don't think that exists anymore. They used to. I don't know if that's still a thing. Now the the Blazers have them by three and a half games for the sixth spot. Yeah, so they are in the they are in the seventh. That's what I thought. But if they win the division, I don't know if they would automatically be catapulted like the NFL with the home playoff game. I don't think so, dude. I don't think. I don't know. A, I don't think that's a thing anymore. I'll have to look that up. But either way, right. right Dallas isn't exactly on cruise control. No, they're uh, in just in just three and a half games. They're the same. They're the same distance behind Portland as they are in front of New Orleans in the eleventh. Uh, excuse me, twelfth spot. Yeah, and they rested Doncic against New Orleans. I know and they lost. I know. I, I, I don't know. But they, he came back against Oklahoma City. They got a free win there because Oklahoma City's terrible. But well, they, 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 Gilgis Alexander's out. So they, well, they also benched Horford for the entire season. They basically acknowledged that they're tanking. But what? Oh, yeah, I mean, I know Horford, uh, you know, I guess Horford has an injury allegedly. No, they're just giving him the drum and treatment. They just shut him down. How do you, how do, you do that? They downsized him. They said they were going in a younger direction. 
and they just decided, you know what, you're just not going to play for the rest of the year and collect $30 million. Well, they're going to try to trade him? Trade that on past already. They don't have a, they don't have like a sneaky after the trade deadline thing you can do like in baseball with his current contract. No, it's it's either a buyout or you just wait. And they just decided we're gonna do what the Cavs did to Drummond, but it's worse because we're not gonna get rid of you. Yeah, so well, I mean they were trying to trade Drummond. That at least made sense in today's NBA. I'm saying they tried to trade him. They ended up not trading him. But I'm saying it makes even less sense for Oklahoma City because the trade deadline passed already. So you don't even have the illusion of a trade. So no, Al Horford's out for the year because of early retirement i i don't know what to call it yeah okay but what either got- way it's just oh so oklahoma city they ended up killing but i like dallas here if i had to pick because if brown's potentially not going to go this boston team isn't very good anyway yeah they didn't look good with, they didn't look good without brown against new orleans yep so yep i'm gonna i'll i'll take i'll take dallas there you know th- neither one of these teams are teams you can really depend on both of them have been very spotty lately Solely based on the line movement. If Brown doesn't play, it probably moves to like three. Yep. Three and a half. I'd also lean under here as well. I agree, but there's no total, so I can't discuss the actual number. Oh, you don't have a total up. Okay. No. Nope. Okay, buddy. Um, and now it's that marquee matchup. Man, it's the one that everybody's been excited about seeing. A preview, perhaps, of the NBA Finals, Scott. It's the Milwaukee Bucks and the LA Lakers. We get to see Giannis versus Kuzma. Get excited. <laughs> Get to see Giannis versus Kuzma. And you know everybody's excited about that. Uh, yep. I'm sure – I guess they I guess they, I guess they can't flex in the NBA. <laughs> no, uh, I wish they could. Uh, I see Milwaukee minus a nine. You know, this is a, this is a Lakers team that's uh, – well, they've, they've beat up on the little sisters of the poor. They've won two straight against Cleveland and Orlando, so – they did something the Clippers couldn't do. They beat Orlando. I don't know when the I don't know when the parade going through Koreatown is, but I'm sure it'll be any day now. I don't know how you, you nine under and pray nine. Yeah, I would. I'm gonna. I, I, I'd play the under here. Would, would be the the play for me. I'm saying under and pray is that kind of yeah. just you're hoping the Lakers score less than a hundred and you can just kind of. Cross your fingers that Giannis doesn't go for 45. What do you what do you, what do you got for a number? 221, 220? Yeah, 221 and a half. 221, 221 and a half, whatever it takes. Yeah. You hope that Bucks win like 110 to like 90, 99, something. Yeah, I mean, Buck, I mean here's the thing. The, the Bucks, well, before they dropped three straight, um, had been playing really good basketball. Again, you know, we talked about the level of competition, but you only beat what you what you could got in front of you, and they'd – They'd won eight straight, but here's the kicker: they'd only covered three of them. Yep. So you know, I'm I'm gonna play I'm gonna play the Lakers here, Scott. Any 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 game where you don't expect a lot of points, you've always got to look long and hard at the underdog. Right? Definitely true. So you just got less points, less t- opportunity for a margin. So yeah, um, under is gonna be my first play here. I would play play the under and pray they can hold you honest to thirty five. Yeah, basically. Probably that'll do it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, in the under is cash and uh, six of the last seven for the Lakers. So they've still, for all their faults, they've still got a decent defense. They've held three of their last six opponents under a hundred points. So they ain't going to do that with Milwaukee. Although the the Knicks did. So you yeah. Know, well, like, then again, they benched their entire team. Uh, Mil- Middleton didn't play. Giannis didn't play. Holiday didn't. Yeah, play. that's right. That was that game, wasn't it? So. So that, you could just throw that game in the garbage, honestly. Well, okay, so great. They brought back everybody in full strength, and they scored 105 against the Clippers. I stand corrected. Without Paul George. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yep, give me the give me the Lakers. Give me those red-hot Lakers winning two straight, and uh, Bucks have lost three straight, failed to cover four straight. They're nothing. They're terrible. It wouldn't surprise if Milwaukee wins by, like, five. No, not a bit. Not one bit. This could easily be a 40-point victory by the Bucks. No question about it. It could be 40, could be five. It depends on if Milwaukee. The first and only play I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I would even consider making on this game is the under. Just, just, just for grins between you and I, I'm leaning, I'm leaning the Lakers. But yeah, it would be under. If I was going to play Milwaukee, I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably play first half, just with the logic that Milwaukee, after getting killed by the Clippers, should probably be pissed off. They don't have to travel. They're already in the Staples Center, of course. So I think Milwaukee could get off to a hot start. It's one of those games you can probably tell who's going to cover in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. If Giannis is just running up and down the court and they just can't stop him, 
they're going to win by like 20. <laughs> if he's if, if he's going all Timmy there in the first five yeah. minutes of the game, it's going to be a world of hurt. Uh, Timmy might have played himself into the NBA tonight. Well, you thought he'd be going to Lithuania. I did. I thought he'd be start. I just thought he'd be starting for Lithuania. Uh, I wish I could have pulled the city in, in Lithuania right there. I, I think it'll be a late second round pick, but I think he'll make it somewhat. If my logic is, if Tyler Zeller could make it into the league for like ten years, I think Timmy can find a roster. Oh, you could you could play that game for a while. I know you can, but he can actually pass a little bit, which is rare for big men. So maybe he has some value. I don't know. Hey. uh... Anything else get your attention? I know you and I were talking before the show that there was a lot of NBA games and none of them really got us too excited. Um, Toronto laying seven and a half. What can possibly go wrong? Toronto laying seven and a half. Oklahoma City Thunder starting with nobody playing. Uh, I said in my play that a video, I took the Clippers. uh, Up 14, fell apart, lost outright. But I said that Orlando might be the worst team in the league based on the current roster and they trade everybody. I kind of take it back. It's probably Oklahoma City. Without, especially without Julius Alexander, who, if I'm Oklahoma City, why would I even bring him back for the rest of the year? Thunder suck. There's uh, no point. It, like, you, you know that Al- Julius Alexander is probably done for the year. Like, there's no point bringing him back. And now they benched Horford. Who do they even have? I know Moses Brown has been pretty good for them, but you're going to tr- trust Pokashevsky taking 15 shots a game? Absolutely. Why not? That's kind of what they're doing. So I know Dort has a concussion now, so they're even worse. Yeah, Dort's yeah, Dort's out. That's the that's the other one that we didn't. It's a concussion. Like they don't have anybody. I I I gotta. I can't touch that game. You just take Mm -hmm. the over and just hope Toronto's defense continues to suck. Sure, I suppose. I guess like I I don't. That's one of the funnier lines that are available. I know it's deja vu because Utah (coughs) beat Memphis by what felt like forty in both meetings last week. They play again. Utah's laying seven and a half or eight. I know they're on the road this time, but uh, I guess you got to lean Utah unless you think Memphis shows something, which I don't because Utah's been ridiculous over the last week. Memphis, is, uh, Utah's one of these teams, again, winning, not necessarily covering. Yeah, they've played really well lately, but then again, Cleveland is just Cleveland, so that's just a separate story. But yeah. Utah had a little bit of a slump there, and ever since then, uh, yeah, they have won six in a row. And two of those games came against Memphis. I apologize. I thought that they won both games pretty handily. They were up handily in both games. The first yep. game, they choked a massive lead and won by three. Yep, had big halftime leads, choked one of them away. But either way. Forgot all about Dre. Um, yeah. I I think I have to like the over in that game, right? They played twice. Both games got into the 230s. Yeah. Yeah. And Memphis has played five in a row to the over. I think I have to look to the over in that game. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, well, I got to make a play of the day video on something. Uh, so. Nobody wants uh, to see the sausage being made, Scott. We just want to see those. Words. I was going to say, so I'm going to save one game and uh, no, it's pretty much it. Mm, saving a little morsel, are you? Mm? I, I guess it's, it's going to be a painful game that I plan on not watching on television, but I'm going to have a play on it. Oh, you must have the NBA package, huh? I actually do have the NBA package. <laughs> do you really? Uh, I found that Amazon actually gives you League Pass on a monthly basis. So you don't have to pay for a full season. You can do it month by month. Really? Yeah, which I found that? out about like a week ago. So, No more pirating, huh? Uh, I played the fifth on that one, but, you know, I'm just saying that I also now have access on some TVs to League Pass. How much is it a month? Uh, I think it's like 30 max, hmm. I think. The dickens, you say? Yeah, it's not that bad. You need, is, that, is that with Amazon Prime? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Well, that's something to look into. All right, buddy. Well, that's certainly a discussion for another time, not necessarily here on, on the recording. Yeah. You can tell we're thrilled about the card tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I know. It's just, you know, and we're kind of suffering from withdrawal, too, because mm-hmm. college basketball's for all intents and purposes, over. You know, we've got three more games, but, you know, it's – it's done. It's, it's when do we start on the FCS football show? Soon, soon. soon. I'm ready to look at it. Hey, we got baseball coming Thursday, so that is true. Look forward to that. So there you go. That's going to be a show for today, guys. Um, if there's anything you're excited about, put it in the comment section. Let us know what. Let us know what's tripping your trigger for today. What what plays that you think we've missed that you're all over? So and I guarantee you, there's some out there. So 
put those in there. Let's see how we do. Um, wish you guys all the best. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. You guys have a great day for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at Winners and Winers. Appreciate you stopping by. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting. Take care, everybody.